Hi everybody, Father Rhett, Father Greg, breaking into your day on this feast of St. Luke. Uh, we wanna keep that feast with you in the way that we always do with scripture and some thinking about what St. Luke's feast day means to us and of course our colic for, uh, for St. Luke. So I'll start with reading uh, from Luke's own gospel. This is from chapter four. Then Jesus filled with the power of the spirit returned to Galilee he began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day as was his custom. He stood up to read and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Mm. Mm. So, what's on your mind today on this Feast of St. Luke? Um, especially given that Luke is a physician. Yeah. Um, uh, one of my dear friends had surgery last night, Philip. Mm. I've mentioned him mm -hmm. to you before. And this is particularly resonant for me because Philip's issues are chronic, so there's not a cure for them. Yeah. Um, but each and every time his physicians give him really good care, the surgeries, thank God, are successful. And I'm reminded that whether or not a cure is ever available to any of us for whatever ails us, yeah. healing is always yeah. available to us. And that more than anything is, is what strikes me this morning, that the healing that God offers us, irrespective of whatever we face, whether it's physical or emotional or spiritual or psychological, is always available to us and sometimes nearer to us than we can even imagine. Um, and more than that, that not just physicians, mm -hmm. but all of us can be agents of healing yeah. if we open ourselves up to the ways in which God is um, nudging us. Yeah. That's, what's, that's what's hitting me this morning. Nice. I guess I'm thinking about uh, Luke as the writer of one of our four canonical gospels. Um, and you know, they each have their own focus, their own interpretive lens of who Jesus is. And you never want to, you never want to approach this as if they're writing, you know, novels or yes. they're writing fictions. Like they're all telling the story of Jesus mm -hmm. as they have received it. But anytime you're writing something, you choose to focus on this, not on that, or to heighten this, but to de-emphasize that. And, um, and what, what's interesting to me this morning is this, this passage. You can see that, you know, every gospel sort of introduces Jesus mm -hmm. in their own way. How does Luke want to introduce us to Jesus? Well, he, he does the birth narrative, which is so important. But as the adult Jesus beginning his ministry, he proclaims good news to the poor, release to the captive. Like that is the lens that is how Luke understands mm -hmm. Jesus. Um, and I, I think it's, uh, you know, if he had not given us that lens, it would have, it would have already been there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was Jesus. Jesus was doing that. Mark and Matthew and John talk about that. But, but if Luke had not given us that lens, we wouldn't have known how important that was mm -hmm. for us and for Jesus or for Jesus and therefore for us. So just feeling grateful for that lens that, that Luke raised up to prominence. Oh, us. yes. Oh, yes. Well, would you, uh, would you say a prayer for us? Certainly will. Let us pray. Almighty God, who inspired your servant Luke the physician to set forth in the gospel the love and healing power of your son, graciously continue in your church this love and power to heal to the praise and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, 
now and forever. Amen. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Uh, a blessed Feast of St. Luke to you, and hope it's a good one. Bye.